Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. Today I'm going to share with you guys some old footage from the Bahamas of some of my deepest dives I've ever done. In today's episode, I hunt the Bahamas with a pole spear as deep as 200 feet. I also walk you through one of my most well-known dives of all time, where I spear a giant hogfish at 164 feet. Some of you guys might remember that video from being on my channel before, but I had to bring it down due to copyright music. Before we get started, do me a favor guys and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. We work super hard on these videos and we want to make sure as many people as possible get to see them. So this first video is from the Bahamas when I was there diving with Luke Malis of Real Addictive Charters. Luke is an unbelievable diver and recently shot the largest Kubera that's ever been speared ever. I trust Luke with my life. He helped keep me alive in Greece as my spotter during the world championship. He's just starting out his channel too guys, so I'll put a link down below. Do me a favor, go subscribe. We were at his house and I spent weeks training with him in Dean's Blue Hole, diving super, super deep every single day in the Blue Hole and then spearfishing whenever the ocean was flat and would let us get out there. Conditions were literally unbelievable this day. And we got out there and I was prepping for the world championship in Greece and I knew I needed to learn how to master the variable weight diving system, which is basically when you go down with a different amount of weight than you come up with. Most of the time that means you're holding a weight, you take it to the bottom and you drop it when you get there. See how crazy this stretch of reef is in the Bahamas. It's a strip of reef that sticks out from Clarence Town seven miles offshore into the middle of nowhere. Both sides of it drop off into thousands of feet and it creates this crazy upwelling of current as the current slams straight into it. Diving it was incredibly difficult as we had to time our dives in the blue and if you had you had to drop in the blue water before you could see the reef and then try and land on this corner. This dive was really, really cool. I got down there, I had a 200 foot float line. I'm holding a rock to bring myself to the bottom. And when I got there, I just hung on my 200 foot float line at about 184 feet due to the angle of the line. I didn't see any fish, but it was a really unbelievable dive in a place that I bet no human has ever seen before. No. Hit the ledge real, real nice. Scooted right off the edge of it. No black. No black. Anything. This next dive here is another variable weight dive, which means that weight takes me to the bottom. I leave it there, and then I come back up. On this one, I was on a Luthra, practicing for the World Championship. I was getting ready to use this rig over in Greece, and I needed to practice with it. All I had on it right here was 200 feet of Dyneema reel line on the spool, so that was as deep as I could go.
You can see again how gorgeous this reef is here in the Bahamas. The Bahamas is known to have these unbelievable walls that just drop off into nowhere. Most of the time we only get to see the top of that wall or the corner of it, which sits a lot of times at like 100 feet. For the first time ever though, I was able to get down to 202 feet right here and look around and get to enjoy again a piece of reef that probably no human has ever seen. What's kind of crazy about these really deep dives is the lack of life down there. Now you would think that you get down there and it's stuffed with fish. But in reality, the photic layer, which is much higher in the water column, is where a lot of those corals, a lot of that plankton, everything kind of lives and breeds, and a lot more of that fish mass live up higher. That's good news for all you guys that aren't quite diving 200 feet. You know you're not missing out on much down there. This was a completely solo dive. I had a good friend of mine, Sarah, driving the dinghy for me. But this is exactly recreating the conditions that I was going to have in Greece. So I needed to be able to do these 200 foot dives with my own rig and be completely self-sufficient by myself. And this next dive here is the one that you guys have all been waiting for, that 164 foot hog. I posted this one to Instagram years ago and it went completely viral. It was just a crazy, crazy dive and a crazy experience. This dive was so crazy because it was not a variable weight dive. That means I had a weight belt on the whole time and I had to work to get down and back up. Luke and I had been hunting this epic ledge in 130 feet and seeing some absolute monster fish. I had no float line rigged up and had my headhunter pole spear connected directly to a reel on my belt. When I got to the edge and looked over the side, I could see a massive hog sitting on the next ledge down. I decided to drop over into the deep and see if I could get a shot off. When I got down to the level of the fish, I knew a stone shot was needed to land this beast as the sharks can be completely relentless out there and I did not want to battle him all the way to the surface. Unfortunately, this turned out to be the smartest hogfish I've ever seen, and I didn't get the stone shot I needed. He dove straight for the nearest hole with the sharks all right behind him. This was literally the worst case scenario, as now I'm tethered to the bottom at 164 feet, and I have to try to surface before my belt reel runs out of line. On the way to the surface, I realized there is a very real chance I run out of line before surfacing. I had a full reel of about 55 meters of line, but because of the current, the angle of the line would be much greater than the depth. I had a quick release system on the belt reel, but I had never used it before, and I made the decision that if I did run out of line, I would drop my entire belt. Due to the extreme depth and current, Luke had drifted away from me, but I spotted him as I neared the surface and I was able to grunt and get his attention. Right then, I ran out of line and I dropped the belt, and I saw Luke heading my way, and I knew that at least if I blacked out, he would be there to rescue me. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have taken that shot. <laughs> what was it? It's a big, giant hog. Oh, yeah? 14, 18, I don't know. Shit. But I shot him at 164. What? Yeah. Shit. That was an expensive drop. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Only like $700. <laughs> was it was like a $250 reel, a weight belt, $400 pile driver. So it's all down there. So I actually went back the next day to do a scuba dive on that spot with a trained instructor to try and find my stuff. Now, we didn't find it. I don't know if a shark ate the fish and dragged it off the ledge, but 200 feet of orange line should have been wrapped around the reef and I was hoping to go down there, 
find it, find my weight belt, find my belt reel, and find my pole spear. Unfortunately, we didn't. Instead, we had one of the coolest scuba dives I've ever had in my entire life. And oh well, that's the cost of diving sometimes. Guys, those were some absolutely crazy dives. Please do not try that at home. Do not go out here and go variable weight diving. I've been trained, I am a professional, so please do not do this without the proper training. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below if you guys would ever do a dive like that or if you guys wanna see some more deep diving. Subscribe if you aren't already because we have a lot more coming for you on Ryan Myers Expeditions.